For you, the listeners of JavaScript Jabber, Loot Crate is offering an opportunity to save 10% on any new subscription at LootCrate.com. Just enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Loot Crate is one of my favorite things. Every month I get a box in the mail, costs less than $20, and it comes with all kinds of goodies. I have stuff from just looking at my shelf, Batman, Spider-Man, Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and much, much more. So if you're a geek, a gamer, anything like that, and you want cool stuff to put around your office, cool t-shirts, comic books, etc., then definitely check out Loot Crate. To save 10% on your new subscription, go to lootcrate.com slash ruby. Again, that's lootcrate.com slash ruby to save 10% on any new subscription. Enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another JavaScript Jabber. Uh, this week, uh, we're still live at Microsoft Connect, and I'm talking to Kirill. I'm not brave enough to try and say your last name, so I'll let you go ahead and introduce it's yourself. Kirill Gavrilu. I work on Azure Cosmos DB. Awesome. Now, are you... Uh, I, I, it seems like sometimes we get developers, and sometimes we get, like, project managers. Where, where, where do you fall uh, on that? I'm a dev manager. One of the, one of the dev managers on Cosmos DB. Okay, cool. And I did some looking at Cosmos DB because I was, I don't remember who I was talking to, but they mentioned that they were using it as a graph database. And I'd had it in my head. I was like, I thought it was a document database. And it turns out it does all those things. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, do you want to kind of explain what it is? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's the quick, uh, the key things about Cosmos database uh, is it's uh, Fully managed, mm -hmm. right? You don't need to worry about CPUs, etc. You just tell us what throughput we need. Okay. Uh, it's globally distributed. Right in the Microsoft data centers. Everywhere, wherever Azure is, mm -hmm. um, you can use. So, so the, the nice thing is that you can bring your data anywhere where your users are. Right. You can be, for example, Azure Portal is a great example. It's a website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a website that is used all over the world. Right. Uh, it's a website that uses Cosmos DB. Uh, Distributed across, um, I think, 26 to 24 regions in the public cloud. Wow. Um, and as worldwide websites do, it has some interesting failover policies, for example. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it goes around the clock with rights. So it, it rides to the region where the sun is uh, because that's where the most traffic is. Right. Uh, so you can, you can be pretty creative. Um, Azure Cosmos DB is a multimodal database, as you observed. Uh -huh. um, it's uh, it has a core data model where we map everything to, and yeah. that is JSON plus plus uh, data model. But it takes graphs, um, it takes MongoDB for documents, it takes uh, key value pairs, um, mm -hmm. it takes uh, white column families. We just added Cassandra API. Right. Yeah, which is also pretty exciting. Yes, yes, yeah. We're very like with Cassandra. We've Cassandra is very well known for its scale uh -huh. uh, and for its uh, it's an awesome open source database. And with Cosmos DB, ability to bring you, uh, which Cassandra is not known for simplicity. <laughs> so, uh, so bringing you a fully managed service where you don't need to worry about tuning config, adding mm -hmm. nodes, building cluster, replica clusters. Right. Um, that can take your data anywhere, but offers you a familiar API uh -huh. that you like and gives you guaranteed performance, <laughs> guaranteed latency characteristics, which you care about as a Cassandra right. developer. Likely you chose Cassandra mm -hmm. for a reason. Yep. Um, that's very exciting for us. Yeah, as a person who has tried to set up Cassandra several times over the years, I can tell you that, yeah, not having to manage all that stuff, because <laughs> yes. it's it's, it's a whole different knowledge set than, hey, I'm going to write some code and I'm going to yeah. talk to the database. So, yeah, it, it, and it makes sense, too. I mean, you've got, like you said, you've got the key value pairs. You've got the, so if you want to do, like, Redis-type stuff or yep, Memcache-type yeah, stuff, tool, yeah. you've got the document store, which is pretty popular in the JavaScript world, we're finding, um, you know, with the MongoDB-type yep. stuff. Yep. And I don't remember what Cosmos DB was called before, but it specifically... It was Document DB, yes. Document yeah, it DB. Was, it started as a document database. Right. Uh, we quickly realized that there is a lot more that we can do to help. Yeah. Um, and that's the other point that we've uh, always strived for, is that we do not claim to be the masters of the API. Right. MongoDB API is a great API. So flexible. Mm -hmm. People like it. 
Uh, well, there are so libraries we, that are already written for it too. Yeah, so exactly. So we just take it, yeah. we implement it at the protocol level, so people can take advantage of all those drivers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to roll this into Azure. Boom. Yeah. And and that's nice. You know. Oh, I don't have to manage my MongoDB server on my that's Linux server nice. anymore. Yes. Or, you know, I don't have to have ten different services: one for my database, and one for my authentication, and one for this, and one for that. Which is one of the nice things about Azure in the first place. It's all in one place. You can set it all up, and yeah, if you're already using Mongo, you can just roll it in, which is really, really nice. Yep. Um, the other benefits <laughs> we've had is the, we were able to learn from others, right? Because uh -huh. systems like Cassandra and Mongo have been out there yep. um, since the inception of NoSQL movement, and uh, learning from their successes and mistakes is mm -hmm. very uh, uh, good and uh, educational. Uh, so we, were, we didn't have to reinvent right. a lot of things. There were a lot of um, learnings and we can because we could we could offer to customers in a way that makes it very scenario oriented like let's take consistency mm -hmm. something that not that many people like to think about um, and if you tried Cassandra like you quickly discover there's about 15 ops of controlling consistency mm -hmm. now for a person who probably hadn't even thought about consistency to begin with learning 15 ops and how they interact what do they right. do it's daunting Mm -hmm. um, so we offer you scenario-based, you know, practical five uh, choices right. with a clear trade-off: consistency versus performance. Um, so that's like, you kind know, it's good to be able to learn from these things as we implement these APIs and right. offer you something that actually makes sense and easier to digest uh, mm -hmm. and improve where we can improve. Right. Now, one of the things that I, I think I had in my head, I've talked to a lot of people about Azure over the last year and a half. And, you know, I don't have it in my head anymore, but I know this is a conception that people have is that, oh, well, if I put it in Azure, that's Microsoft and it's expensive. So, you know, what, what, what kind of pricing models do you have for this? Is it all based on throughput or is it database size or what, what are we looking at here? Um, it's throughput. So because it's a system that offers you uh, independent scale on throughput and data size, mm -hmm. um, you pay for throughput you provision. And you can provision the throughput uh, with API call or with UI in the portal. Right. Um, and you can change it up and down. That's mm -hmm. a nice thing compared to VMs, which take time to deprovision, provision, right. and tune the config. Uh, with Cosmos DB, it's one API call, and you can go from you know like 5,000 requests per second to 10 million requests per second and back, right. depending on when you need. Mm -hmm. And you pay only for the throughput that you provision on that hour. It's hourly okay. based. Um, so you don't have to you know, provision and pay a um, lot of money when you don't need Right. Um, uh, you pay for storage, it's uh, cheap and you pay as you go. Like to, right. It's, it, there's some price for a gigabyte. Yeah, it's, uh, it's similar metering to yeah. AWS yes, or Google yeah, Cloud Platform exactly. or whatever, right? Yep. Um, yes, the um, throughput provision, systems that allow provision throughput, uh, there is always a concern, okay, if I, if I forget about it, it can run up the bill. Yeah. Um, so we offer you a very easy way to scale up and down. Mm -hmm. um, you can write a function that will just monitor your metrics, and right. monitor your API rate, and scale up and down. Um, oh, that makes sense. And eventually, we'll offer you kind of an automated auto scale system that mm -hmm. that can do. It just it's uh, it really depends on what you want, how mm -hmm. aggressive you want the auto scale right. to be. Um, so right now we give it we give you the tools and you do it. Um, eventually, we'll probably codify some turnkey patterns and auto right. scale. So one, one other thing that I'm looking at with this is, you know, with key value pairs or document databases, I mean, there are a lot of different paradigms, and you said there's a core data model behind it. So does that mean that I can switch between the different um, paradigms, or are they all kind of thought about differently? You can switch where it makes sense. Right. It doesn't make a lot of sense to switch, let's say, from MongoDB to Azure Table API. Mm -hmm. There's probably not a lot of scenarios for you that, right. that require you to do that. But it does make sense to add edges to mm -hmm. your documents and yep. start treating them as vertexes. Right. And that's a scenario you can easily do. Um, it does make sense if you move, let's say, your Cassandra implementation and later on, well, I really want a bit richer data model. Mm -hmm. You can enrich it. So you can switch. Right. So yes, you can switch. Uh, it um, it's, uh, works for scenarios where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I would not claim that, yes, you can go from anywhere to anywhere on the same right. data and it just magically appears uh, nice and tight. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's just that's not what most people need. You right. Um, you can start from any entry point. Um, and then using ours, it, it's the same core data model. That we gotcha. Have. Huh. So, what, I mean, how do you decide what goes into this? Because it seems like an everything database. I mean, you're probably not going to use it that way, but... Yeah, I think they, really what we are about is you can come to us from any data point, from any mm -hmm. other point. Usually, folks choose Cosmos DB when they have a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't just wake up one day and say, I'm not going to use SQL. I'm going to use Cosmos right. DB for my, you know, uh, my catalog. But once I have a problem, okay, I probably mm -hmm. need to... Um, move to a NoSQL database, or maybe I already have MongoDB and it's hard to manage. Uh -huh. I have Cassandra and I'm spending a lot of <laughs> DevOps cycles on managing, and that's when I move. Right. Hence, we offer you the multi-model approach because you can come with you come anything, with whatever, with whatever and, you're yeah. using, and you can now take advantage of the core capabilities. We mm -hmm. are our role is to offer you that fully managed, globally distributed right. uh, guarantees on throughput, latency, and mm -hmm. consistency. That's what we are known for. Um, you come with API you love, um, and we yep. love you back. Um, the uh, What does the migration path look like then? So let's say I have a PostgreSQL or a MongoDB or something. Um, it's uh, There are two parts to it. There is, I mean, migration of the app is connection string. Mm -hmm. Just change the connection string, now you're pointing, you have, your driver doesn't even know that it's pointing to Cosmos DB. Um, right, migrating no, data. But, yeah, data. Yeah, migrating data. Uh, <coughs> there are various ways of migrating the data snapshots. Over. Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of tools within Mongo ecosystem to migrate data between Mongo databases. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true if you have the full API. Yeah. Expert, yeah. So they, they continue to work. You can use mm -hmm. it. Uh, real time data gets interesting. So that's something that we are very uh, passionate about. We don't have a turnkey solution for it. So right now you have to basically write a um, sort of a, you can write a function. Yeah, you, you play the dual write yes. game for yeah, a while it, until, okay, it dual write, use that. Yeah. Is it dual write or you listen on an op log? Uh -huh. And you write into right. Cosmos DB, and it becomes your non-voting replica, and eventually you can fail over. Right. Um, so it, there are strategies. Um, um, it makes sense to make it easier. Mm -hmm. That's one. Uh, data migration is one of the uh, areas that we want to invest more. Right. In. Um, we announced data migration service. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, and there's lots of databases that we can do it with. Um, yeah, and it depends on, can every API comes with its own ecosystem of tools, and those right. tools work because we support it at the protocol level. Mm -hmm. This episode is sponsored by Linode. Linode is offering listeners of this podcast a $20 credit, which is good for four free months at their lowest plan. Their plans start at one gigabyte of RAM for $5 a month. You can get your servers in any of their 10 data centers, and their high memory plans start at 16 gigabytes. Get a server running in under a minute. They do hourly billing with a monthly cap on all plans and add-on services like backups, node balancers, long view, etc. VMs for full control, running Docker containers, encrypted disks, VPNs, etc. You can run a private Git server. They provide native SSD storage, 200 gigabit network, and Intel E5 processors. They have 24-7 friendly support, even on holidays, and a seven-day money-back guaranteed. So go check them out at linode.com slash JavaScript Jabber. Makes sense. That's really interesting, too. Um... Now, do these databases take, like, large blobs of data? Because I've seen people store, like, images in databases and stuff. Right. Um, we offer two few, um, a couple solutions for large data. Um, you can use our attachments uh -huh. for binary, because it doesn't make sense to just store a really right. large image as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a document record. You're, abu you're abusing the system. You can uh, chunk your data, always. And uh -huh. because we reliably guarantee you kind of the, the, the consistency levels that you like. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take, you know, your Mona Lisa, they much chunk it up and we'll make sure that you can reassemble it at any time and it's going to be in order, it's going to be um, and nothing, nothing gets lost. Uh, so there are a variety of approaches. Um, mm -hmm. I actually prefer chunking, usually recommend when it's right. really care about the really large data but you care about uh, performance and you care about the global distribution. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more accurate if you do it uh, by chunking and storing as right. uh, documents or entries or, mm -hmm. uh, or rows, as opposed to storing it as an attachment. Right. Um, you get a lot more correctness out of the system. Huh, that's good to know. Why is that? 
Um, well, for example, let's say we're doing you want a particular level of consistency. Let's say session consistent. Mm -hmm. um, people choose on the spectrum between eventual consistency and strong. Right. Right. Um, now, let's say you want, well, let's say strong consistency. Mm -hmm. Now, if you if you're talking about attachments, um, we're storing them on blob storage. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a different system. Right. Um, that blob storage does not have the same level of replication that Cosmos DB has. Mm -hmm. right? um, so it's just, it's not, you know, it, Azure blobs do have replication, but it's more of a for DI right. purposes. Right? So you don't get the same, you may end up having a record in the, your rep, in your replica, in your read region somewhere, mm -hmm. and the blob hasn't traveled there yet. Right. right? Um, so you may get into those scenarios. If you chunk it up and you store it in our database, then you are guaranteed, like you picked session, and then anyone with a session token will always get the rights that you need. Right. But you pay only for the cost of eventual consistency. Okay. If you pick strong, you're guaranteed that anyone will get your rights immediately as they're committed. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter how large your image is, it's trying right. to do into pieces. That makes sense. So what, what kinds of use cases are you envisioning people using Cosmos DB for? Um, NoSQL systems in general, uh, and Cosmos DB in particular, are usually used when uh, people run into a problem. And these problems could be high throughput, these problems could be large volumes of data, these problems could be large variability, uh, mm -hmm. there's no schema. Um, right. That's when kind of traditional RDB, RDBMS systems become challenging and people looking for solutions. Mm -hmm. um, Cosmos DB uh, is great at all uh, for all of those, um, and it comes with additional bells and whistles like right. global distribution, um, guarantees on throughput, um, mm -hmm. latency. What we see is a lot of real-time data scenarios, uh, real-time experiences, um, real-time data, um, IoT, dynamics, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, we see a lot of uh, kind of event-driven. Application patterns. Right. Uh, you treat you use Cosmos DB as an event store. Uh -huh. um, like actually, uh, most retailers need it in one way or the other. Uh -huh. And the architectures typically you have an event store and the events coming in, and then you have a bunch of microservices that are processing those events. Right. Um, very common pattern um, with Cosmos DB, and uh, and Cosmos DB comes as a highly scalable, uh, queryable, real time queryable mm -hmm. uh, event store. So that's uh, that's nice. Um, lots of uh, Traditional NoSQL system needs the catalogs, where the schema varies, mm -hmm. um, and just that, that storing semi-structured data that, right. that, that, that works pretty well. Um, engagement scenarios, um, where the real time and kind of context, where, like the apps that need context-aware behaviors. Right. Um, and Cosmos DB latency, uh, I'm seeing, the no need to the lack of need to specify schema as well as say the speed that it gives mm -hmm. you um that helps um as also would be probably the most common patterns obviously messaging the tradi yeah. traditional no sql uh, scenarios apply as well right and then you mentioned that it uses the mongodb api and the cassandra api what other apis does it support it offers um for documents, data models, it offers uh, SQL API. Mm -hmm. We kind of vary. We have a variant of SQL that works with the, for documents okay. or MongoDB API. Uh, for graphs, it uses Gremlin API, okay. uh, which is Apache Gremlin uh, uh -huh. project. Uh, for white column stores, it offers Cassandra API. Mm -hmm. um, key value pairs, it offers. You can choose either Cassandra or Azure Table Storage. Um, I think that's. Uh, but you can use Spark, but it's sort of more of a mm -hmm. uh, side system. Yeah. Very cool. Now, if people want to try it out, is this something that only exists in the cloud? Uh, we have an emulator that you can run locally. Okay. Uh, we also, important for, for trying out, we have a no commitment, no subscription required, uh, seven day. Um, you can just go to our website, mm -hmm. log in with your live ID, and get your Cosmos DB fully featured for seven days. No right. need for credit card, no need for uh, subscription. And we have a traditional one year long Azure uh, mm -hmm. free tier with included amounts for Cosmos DB. Yeah, I, I think they said that in the keynote yesterday that it's like you get 
$200 credit in the trial, and then you get, like, a free Linux machine, a free Windows machine, and a free Cosmo data. DB yeah. for some, some amount. Yeah. yeah. For a year. Yeah. Very nice deal. Yeah, so, I mean, you have plenty of time to kind of kick the tires. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then if you have to scale beyond that, then, you know, you do. But, yeah. That, then that's... you probably have a reason to do it. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I'm finding, you know, because I've, I've kind of gone, uh, I spend about half of my time doing development and the other half of my time doing business stuff. And most of my development stuff is for my business stuff. But if I can work things out so that I don't have to spend as much time pulling things together, like I've gotten really, really bullish on picking up services that do what I need instead of writing the code myself if I can. And, and so this just looks nice because it's, okay, I don't have to spin up a... A, an Ubuntu Linux machine, install MongoDB on it, hope I hardened it well enough, um, manage it so that it's getting updates or at least security updates on a regular basis. You know, all of that goes away and it's just, oh, well, I'll just pay Microsoft to manage my database for me and all I have to do is make sure the data goes in the right way and comes out the right way. And until you're really using it for business, you don't even have to pay. Yeah. Uh, because there is, an, there is enough free yep. tier for you to try things out. Yeah, well, and even then, I mean, you know, if I have a handful of beta users, I probably still may not push it over that. Right. So, yeah. So it's exciting stuff. And, and I've seriously been thinking after seeing some of the um, demos and stuff about, yeah, about moving some of my stuff to Azure. It's, uh, it's very, like, the uh, now we are at the point where the broad the applicability is so broad uh -huh. uh, and yet the um, the system is so tuned pretty much every microsoft product uses this now right um so lots of there's uh, lots of enterprise customers have uh -huh. their business bet on it uh -huh. um yeah it's um, yeah but even for me that's use. kind of a small business i mean it's like oh okay so i can write my code and say okay make it into a docker container and push it up yeah. um, point it at a cosmos db um, you know, there are all kinds of other tools that are built in. Um, I could manage conceivably, I don't know if I want to go this far, but I could even move my Git repos to Visual Studio Team Services and use all those tools to manage the whole project. And everything just kind of lives in one place, which makes life easy yeah. for me. Or you don't have to if you yeah. don't want to. Yeah. yeah, and any of those pieces that I just mentioned, you know, I can keep it on GitHub or GitLab or, you know, I can find some other Kubernetes setup and push Docker up there or whatever. But yep. anyway, really cool. Um, is there anything else that people should know about Cosmos DB? I mean, it, at first I was like, oh, it does all these things. It sounds kind of complicated, but it seems pretty simple on the face of it. It's just how do you want to think about your data? It is, yes. And it's really, um, you don't have to think, think and learn about all those APIs, right? Right. Like if you have a Mongo database, and you are tired of managing it, mm -hmm. um, or you want to, or you have really lots of data, uh, or you need large large mm -hmm. throughput, um, you can save a lot of time for yourself and money mm -hmm. by moving it over to Cosmos DB, and you don't need to no learn about anything else. It's no, just you just Mongo migrate your data in. Migrate, yeah. You tell Mongoose, because this is a JavaScript podcast, you tell Mongoose to exactly. look over there instead of over here. And, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, it's not, um, the multi-model approach is not to complicate. Multi-model approach is to mm -hmm. speak your language. Right. Um, you don't have to worry about others yep. un until the time when you believe that you need to. Yeah. One other thing that does come to mind is if I'm working on my own product and I want to periodically, I don't know, replicate the production database so that I can run inform you know, run reports or run tests or do staging on, you know, a, a different right. Right. setup. Right. Yep. Is that pretty easy with Cosmos DB? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So we have, just like many of the uh, systems, we offer you change log, uh, mm -hmm. uh, change feed. Uh, so you can listen and you can uh, right. create your own. Uh, so you just set up snapshot. replication, yeah. not too much. You obviously, we are a distributed database, so you can have your read, read replicas everywhere. So you mm -hmm. can take a snapshot of it and work with it. Right. Um, so there are, more, there are many different options for yep. you to work with it. Super cool. Uh, just get... So the one last segment that we do for the shows is picks. And essentially what it is is just a shout out to whatever you've been enjoying lately. So, I mean, it could be anything from TV shows to technical tools to, you know, 
programming things to, gee, there's this other wicked awesome database that we want to add to Cosmos DB or anything like that. Um, do you have two or three things that you just kind of want to shout out? Hey, I've really been enjoying this. Do you run your own freelance business? Or maybe you're thinking about picking up some business on the side. Well, then you need FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the quickest and easiest way to get invoices out to your clients. It's easy to use. It works anywhere, available from any device, uh, on the desktop, iPhone, iPad, Android, and all of your data is backed up and secure. And it makes it really easy to get organized and get paid. You'll be tracking time, logging expenses, and invoicing your clients in no time. You can also save time billing, freeing up several days per month to focus on the work that you love, and you get paid faster. FreshBooks customers are paid on average five days faster because there's a link on the invoice that says pay me now. And it's a great way to grow your business. Plus, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day trial. That's right, 30-day trial if you try them out. So go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Once again, for a 30-day trial, go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter dev chat in the how did you hear about us section. Well, I really loved the uh, the key, the, uh, the demos that uh, Chris did at Keynote with shared mm -hmm. debugging and VS Code. Yeah, we I talked to Chris yesterday. Really awesome. Yeah, and like I, I was like, oh man, okay, Chris, you better come to our, our team and demo it again. Uh, so yeah, I was I was more. grinning and going, I've wanted this for so long. Yeah, yeah it just, it's one of those things that you don't think about it, but it's like, now that you, oh, yeah, you could have yeah. done that. Oh, I didn't have to go and explain over I am uh, to someone. No, don't click there. Yeah. Don't click here. No, 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 next line. No, next line. Yeah. Uh, like said, the share screen debugging it was always yep. such a pain. Uh, yeah, you highlight yes. it. I'm I'm looking at this bit of code. Yeah, I said, like, oh, which one? No, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, this is, uh, yeah, it, it blew my mind. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm going to jump in here with one pick, and this is something that has been really, really handy, especially since I've been here in New York. Um, I'm always looking for better ways to work outside of my office, um, just because sometimes I just need a change of pace or something, right? So I'll go to Denny's or something where they have plugs under the table and Wi-Fi. And, um, you know, I, I like working on my laptop. I have a brand new MacBook Pro. Um, but uh, one of the things that... I was just like, you know what, if I'm sitting in a booth by myself, it's nice to have another monitor. And I found on Amazon, it's USB powered and um, driven monitor for like, I think it was like a hundred bucks and it's an nice. AOC monitor. And so, yeah, um, I had to install the driver, but that was it. And then when I go and set up, all I have to do is plug the USB into the dongle. That's the one thing I hate about the new MacBook Pro is it's all USB-C, yeah, yeah. Thunderbolt 3. Um, but I, I just plug that into the dongle and it powers and drives the monitor. So that's it. it. And it has a little kickstand thing on the back. So I just set them up side by side and I've got dual monitors when I'm working away from home. So Very nice. It's amazing how low voltage they became, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm just imagining where things go from here. But yeah. it's, not, that's awesome. it's not incredibly high resolution, but it's good enough. Nice. So. Nice, nice. So you can you can have multi monitor set up right in Denny's. Yep. Nice. Yep. So I'll probably set it up right out here when I'm done and get some work done between recordings. So yeah, um, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, folks. But yeah, uh, thanks again, Kirill. Um, Thank you. If people want to follow you, say on GitHub or Twitter, or yeah, maybe have yeah, a blog yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Kirill G, Kirill G MSFT on Twitter. Um, you can find us. We we blog as a team, so we have mm -hmm. a team blog on on Azure, Azure blogs, and um, yeah, we're excited to share always what we have. Awesome. Well, thank you again for uh, coming and talking to us live. Um, this room's not as echoey as the one yesterday, so we'll, we'll sound better, but yeah. Great, um, great to be here. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up, and we will uh, probably have another interview from Connect next week. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.